Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my spring series. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. This next DIY is actually my favorite DIY today, this video. I have these seed starter pots that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use one of them for the bottom of this little candle tray here you find in the candle section, but I'm also showing you that you can use a applesauce cup if you have an applesauce cup. Anything like that would be just fine. And I have the wooden birdhouse from the Dollar Tree as well. I tried to pull out the rope, but it turns out there's a big knot on the bottom of that rope. So I just take my pencil and I push it through the other way and then I'm gonna give the birdhouse a shake and it comes out. So that's how you get that off. And then I didn't have any spackling. I didn't have any, what is the other one, joint compound. So I had, well I used what I had. I had this Dollar Tree caulking and I'm just using my fingers and putting it sideways. You can see right there and I sweep it again right there and that creates that little peak you need at the top so that it matches the rest of the roof. And now I'm just using some hot glue for this part. This is Sure Bonder hot glue that's supposed to be good for glass. So I figured it should work, we're gonna see. <laughs> and I know some of you are intimidated or not big believers that you can paint with acrylic paint on glass. And you can, I've been doing it for 25 years. It's really not about what kind of paint you put on the glass, it's really about whether or not you're going to seal it. So if you seal it, it's going to stay just fine. Now the trouble you will run into when you paint acrylic paint on anything shiny, and I'll be honest, is if your fingers have some paint on and you're holding it, you'll lift the paint off. Or if it starts to dry a little bit and you keep sweeping back and forth, back and forth, you'll lift the paint off. So you have to move quick. It's a one-time opportunity there, it's one chance. You gotta move quick, put a good coat on, and you don't go back once it starts to dry, you leave it. And once it's dry, you can go ahead and seal it and it will stay just fine. Now, I've also had people tell me you can use Mod Podge, but I'm gonna show you something from a previous video I did during fall 2021. This is Mod Podge on glass. So I didn't like the way it looked. So all I did was take this little blade and you're gonna see that I just lift it off. It really is a sheet of plastic. There I go. So that's not really a secure way either. Yes, your paint will stick to the Mod Podge, but your Mod Podge won't stick to the glass any better than it would, you know, any better than the acrylic paint would. Now, another trick I've heard is that you can spray it first with a varnish or spray paint or something like that, and your acrylic paint will stick to that. Well, yes, but that's if you wanna do two processes unnecessarily, because if you're careful the way you paint your acrylic paint, you have to seal it because it will chip off too easy if it's on glass. Um, you're gonna spray that on anyway, and once it's sealed, it's kind of a mute point. In other words, you'll be doing a varnish to get it to stick, and then you'll have to seal it again because it still will chip off. Either way, you need to seal your acrylic paint. I hope that makes sense. And if it didn't, please feel free to ask me any questions you need to down below in the comments. It's just, I always like to craft on an extreme budget and any materials that aren't necessarily necessary is in my mind anyway, it's wasteful because I'm budget friendly that way. So there's no point spraying your glass with this, the Mod Podge acrylic sealer, and then painting it when you have to just go out and seal it anyway. And once you seal it, it's gonna be just fine without the sealant. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> it's like a step that you don't need to do. As long as you're holding it carefully, painting quickly, letting it dry very thoroughly in between coats, it, it holds up just fine for the look. So I went ahead and I glued a raffia bow on the pink birdhouse. I put some of the Dollar Tree moss around the bottom here, some Dollar Tree little roses. I'm just gonna do like a little spring scene at the bottom because I thought that was so cute. But I absolutely love the way this DIY came out. I honestly think this is perfect home decor for French country or shabby chic, even farmhouse because it is Easter and these are Easter colors. And I'm showing you that pick from Walmart again, great deal, and we're all done.
For this next DIY, I went ahead and took a Dollar Tree shaped egg, you know, those egg plaques you can buy, and I traced it on cardboard because I love to challenge myself with cardboard to see if I can make high-end looking decor using cardboard because, of course, cardboard is the cheapest way you can go when you're crafting, and it's super, super satisfying if you can make it look amazing. And most of us have access to free cardboard boxes at some point, so it's always my, you know, favorite one of my favorite things to do so I decided I wanted to see if I could stain cardboard I thought why not papers would and cardboard's definitely a step up from paper so I took watered down wax you, you can use any antique wax you want and I'm just doing the first coat because I want to see how it takes with water you know mixed in and it's really slippery and slidey that's why I chose the wax and there's not that much water in it but I chose this over paint, although I think you could probably do paint if you keep your, you know, if you do a dry brush technique. I've shown that in many videos. You can make anything look like wood if you get really good with dry brushing and using different colors. But back to this, I'm drying it now to assess where we're at to kind of take a look and see what color I'm getting. And while it's drying and I'm watching it, I'm taking these bunnies that I found at the Dollar Tree. They have like a little stake on the end of them and I just cut it off with my scissors, but I want to go ahead and stain the bunny while I have the wax out because I knew I was gonna go ahead and move to using wax that's not diluted straight out of the bottle. So I want to get everybody stained before I put everything away. So I just take the brush, stain my little wood bunny, and I also want to compare the bunny that's wood side by side to the egg to see if it looks the same because that's the look I'm trying to get, right? Stained wood. I take a little bit of tissue, I wipe the excess off, and you can see there, you can see it. I don't know if you said it was really fast, but you can actually see that the bunny is extremely close to the egg. You can see it right there in the upper left-hand corner too. I mean, they pretty much look the same, but I wanted a little bit more wood grain in there. So, and interestingly enough, the bunny doesn't have a visible wood grain, but I still thought that would be pretty for the egg because the egg does have those little creases where it bent, even though this is really thick cardboard that I can't bend, I think maybe it got banged around or something happened where it had these natural little creases and I just felt that made it look more like wood. So I'm using undiluted wax, dry brushing it on, and then I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm using just my pointer finger, just one finger, and I'm just kind of strategically going through the wax and streaking it on purpose to make it look like wood grain. Now I'm gonna cover most of this egg and I knew that, that's why this was a perfect thing to practice on. I'm really only concerned about the very top looking like wood and look at that, it actually, the very top there where the lines are, the top of the egg, I don't know why I'm showing you the bottom of it, but. <laughs> because it was the top that I wanted to focus on, but it does. So I think, well, wow, I wonder if I can sand this too, just like wood with a nail file. Eh, you can kind of, it's not as good as cutting it because it does get like little hairs on the edge. So that's not as good. But now I have this lace doily from the Dollar Tree as well. It comes in a package of two. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cover the lower half of this egg with the lace doily. One of the things I have spoken about before is how important it is to cover the edge of cardboard if you're going to use cardboard to do your crafts because obviously, right, if you can see the side of the cardboard hanging on the wall, that's gonna look really cheap and nasty. So you can do it different ways. I will often take for all year round decor and glue four of these. So I would have cut out four eggs, glued them all together, taken spackling and put it along the side and then stain the spackling. That looks awesome. That looks like a super heavy, nice plaque. You can also use parts of baskets. You know, there's a Dollar Tree basket that I've taken apart before and you can use, it comes in natural colors. There's one that was out last year that was natural basket color and then one that was kind of stained. Either one of those, depending on what craft you're doing, make excellent covers for the side of your crafts. That metal ribbon that Dollar Tree sells also makes wonderful coverings, the leather ribbon that Dollar Tree sells. So there I'm showing you those two lines. Look at how awesome that looks. That really does look like wood for what it's worth. I mean, it, it might as well have been a wood Dollar Tree, you know, sign. But the one thing that I did do that I regretted, I still love the way this came out, but I made all of that effort and then I went and glued a bow on the top. And of course, because it was cardboard, there's no going back. If you tear that off, you'll damage it. But if you make this craft, 
I would suggest that you consider putting the bow on the bottom of the egg and not on the top and just doing all the pretty ribbons hanging down from the bottom of the egg and then glue more of them together or use twine or nautical rope or something around the edge of the egg to cover the side but so you can show off your wood grain you know if you get it you know if you're rocking it it's looking really good (laughs) it just doesn't make sense to cover it up with a bow and flowers so I guess if this was a Dollar Tree sign, I would have decorated it this way, but I really want to show off the wood grain. Anyway, that is a pick from Walmart. They are out right now as I speak, and you know I don't know if they'll be there a week from now, but they're 97 cents, and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now, I wanted you guys to see the bunny in the center there. I was going to consider putting it in the center and just gluing it there, and I wanted your opinion, but I ended up deciding to go ahead and glue the bunny to the center of the Dollar Tree egg, thread some wooden beads, and then make him look like he's hanging off the wooden beads from the twine. So here's something I did that's kind of unusual. To close up the twine in a loop shape, I just put a little dot of hot glue on the tip of it and then pushed it back up inside the bead and that did the trick because this is very lightweight. It's not anything heavy, so it was just for the look. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tack down the bunny with a little bit of glue so that he's hanging nice you know what he looks like he's hanging nice because sometimes things don't always hang exactly the way you want them to (laughs) so I tack it down and I also added a little bit of ribbon tail there so that does the job of covering up the side of the cardboard but it also like I said I cover all the wood Oh well, I take some nautical rope, hot glue it on the back, secure it with a bit of masking tape while it's hot so the masking tape kind of melts into it, and then I tack my little egg ornament down and we're all done. I do think this came out very beautiful and I'd love to know what you guys think. For this DIY, I found this really pretty fabric at Walmart. I believe they were $2 each, and it's very generous. You get quite a bit. I have a pattern for a bunny. That's a free printable. You'll find it down below in my description box. And I got this quilting from Amazon. Now, if you don't have something like that, I'm showing you this foam that I got in an Amazon package and it was for free. It came protecting something and I kept it. That would also work for this craft as well. You could also use cotton balls and we're going to have to iron. (laughs) That's the nice thing about buying the cloth on the roll. You don't have to iron, but when you buy it folded up like this, you have to iron. So I'm showing you my new iron that I got. I finally splurged on a really nice iron and we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of water. And I just folded a sheet down It was a queen size sheet and I just folded it down so that I protect my tabletop there and gave it everything a quick iron so there's no wrinkles. There's our pattern, our little bunny that I chose and I'm gonna cut him out. And then I'm gonna trace him on some cardboard and we're gonna cut out three cardboard shapes. I was gonna just stuff these bunnies and then after examining the batting that I have, the quilt batting, I decided that it was a little bit thinner than I wanted and I wasn't sure they were going to be able to lean up very well or stand up very well. So for this year, we're going to go ahead and put some cardboard in between the batting. So we're going to have cardboard and then we're going to have the batting on either side of the cardboard. So all I did here, it's pretty self-explanatory, is I just glue the batting down and then I put, you know, I, I just put it on both sides of the bunny and I do that for all three bunnies. When it came to gluing the material together, I just kept my glue very, very close right along the edge of the cardboard. And then I pressed in with my nails to make sure that the seam was close to the cardboard and the batting as possible. And then I just take my scissors when I'm all done and I'm gonna give these guys a trim. Using a Dollar Tree lace ribbon, I'm gonna put bows on these guys. Now, last year when I put a bow on a bunny with two little tails, because I'm using the Dollar Tree pom-poms here for the tail, and as you can see, I want the two there to have bows on the opposite sides of their neck, and then the middle one is kind of, you know, I love the little bunny faces. He's kind of my favorite, that material, so the bow's in the center. But I had some people come on and say, you can't put bows on 
the back, that's the back of them. And I thought, well, why not? Because I used to have a Shih Tzu. And when I took him to get bathed, he would come out with a little bow on the back of his neck. So, <laughs> oh, and my cats, well, not me, my mother, she used to take our cats in to get bathed. To be fair to my mother, she only did it twice because they were very unhappy. <laughs> but they also came back with bows on the back of their necks. So if you want to leave them off, you can. I think that looks cute too. Definitely if you're doing like a rustic or a primitive look, that would be great. But I love the little bows on the side of their neck or on the back and I still see this as the back of the bunny. But anyway, as always, I would love to know what you guys think. They're all done. They were super fun to make. They make great accent pieces around the house. You can put them wherever you want on console tables, floating shelves. They're just super fun and they add a lot of festive energy to your environment. For this DIY, I took a Dollar Tree jar, they come with a lid, and I made this free printable. I thought it was really, really cute. And this is another free printable, the roses, that you can use along with this. You can skip that one if you want, but I just wanted to decorate the lid. And I discovered that the masking tape roll at the Dollar Tree is the perfect shape to use to trace the circle for this lid. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful, I hope it is. And I'm gonna use the Elmer's um, glue stick to glue this down. I pretty much use a glue stick for everything and I have done it before on shiny surfaces and I've been really really pleased. Again, not super critical what you use to glue it down as long as it's a decent adhesive but it is critical if it's going to be handled a lot and get wear and tear you know, you're going to be touching it that you use a good sealant whether that's a spray or whether that's Mod Podge. In this case I went ahead and I used Mod Podge. Now you'll see that I do put the Mod Podge a little bit over the edge of the label and then I take a baby wipe and wipe around as straight as I can just so there's like a little sliver of Mod Podge hanging over the paper on every single edge to seal it in because I'm going to be touching it a little bit and I might pick it up and I don't want it to come off. But I'm not a big fan of covering the entire glass with Mod Podge for the reason that I showed you in the previous clip. <laughs> it just, for me, it looks streaky and you can, it peels off. It just gets to be too much. You could also definitely spray a varnish on this. That would work too. And I have to be honest, there has been quick crafts that I've done that have just been meant like just to stay up for a season and I didn't seal you know, it was on glass or something shiny and I did seal it with Mod Podge and it still stayed on. So here you can see it with a lid. It's a beautiful decorative jar. And then here it is as a vase. I had so much fun making these DIYs and I hope you had fun watching them too. If you did, don't forget to leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, share my video. It really does help me here on YouTube. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.